Little Fox. The Adventures of Robin Hood, Chapter One: Trouble in the Forest. A long time ago, a famous outlaw lived in England. His name was Robin Hood. Robin and his band of merry men lived in the green woods of Sherwood Forest. The forest was near the town of Nottingham. Everyone in the countryside loved Robin and his men. The outlaws always took care of those in need. They robbed the rich and gave to the poor. They rarely said no to anyone in need who asked for something. This is the story of how Robin Hood became an outlaw. It began one day when the sheriff of Nottingham announced an archery contest. Robin was only 18, but he was very proud of his skill as an archer. I'm going to enter the contest, he said to himself. One morning, Robin chose his best bow and arrows. Then he set off from the town of Loxley. It was a beautiful day in May. Flowers bloomed in the fields, and apple blossoms filled the trees. Birds chirped brightly, and the sun felt warm. Robin whistled as he walked along. He was happy to be outdoors. On his way to Nottingham, Robin passed through Sherwood Forest. Suddenly, he came upon a group of the king's men sitting under a tall oak tree. The men were feasting and drinking. One man, with his mouth full of food, called out to Robin. <laughs> Hello, little lad. He said, laughing. I see you have your toy bow and arrows. Where are you taking them? Ha <laughs> ha! The other men laughed too. Robin got angry. He didn't like being laughed at. My bow and arrows are as good as yours. He declared. In fact, I'm on my way to Nottingham. I'm going to compete in the sheriff's archery contest. Ha <laughs> ha! Listen to him! Said another man. He's just a boy, but he thinks he can compete against real archers. Robin fumed. Uh, I'm very good at shooting. I can hit a target a thousand feet away. He said boldly. The men <laughs> roared with laughter. Listen to him, the first man said. It's easy to boast when there is no target in sight. <laughs> At this, Robin grew even angrier. Actually, I see a herd of deer in that clearing over there. I bet five pounds that I can kill the biggest one. And I bet five pounds that you won't kill anything, the man replied. Robin picked up his bow and swiftly shot an arrow toward the herd. The finest deer in the herd dropped dead a second later. Ha! Robin cried. How do you like that shot? I wish I'd bet 500 pounds. The king's men weren't laughing anymore. Now they were angry. The man who'd lost the bet was the angriest of all. You'd better get out of here. The man said with a nasty snarl. You just killed one of the king's deer, and that's a very serious crime. Catch him! Cried another man. No, let him go! Said someone else. He's just a boy. He won't hurt anyone. Robin stood silently, glaring at the men. Finally, he whirled around and stalked off. As he strode away, his blood boiled. He was still young and sometimes had a bad temper. The man who'd made the bet was still furious, too. This young stranger had embarrassed him in front of the others. Suddenly, he sprang to his feet and grabbed his own bow. He sent an arrow whistling toward Robin. Luckily for Robin, the man's aim wasn't perfect. But his arrow still came very close to Robin's head. Robin spun around and lifted his own bow again. You said I was no archer, he cried. 
I dare you to say that again. He shot an arrow back at the man, and the man fell forward with a sharp cry. <laughs> As the other men gathered around their friend, Robin took off into the dense woods. Go after him! cried one man. But none of the men followed the bold young archer. They were all too afraid of his skill with his bow and arrow. Instead, they turned back to their dead friend and lifted his body. They began to carry him toward Nottingham. As for Robin, all the joy had disappeared from that beautiful spring day. He hung his head. What have I done? He thought. I wish I'd never seen those men. I wish I'd never raised my bow to shoot that first arrow. Guilt and sadness filled young Robin Hood. Yet there is nothing I can do now, he thought. What is done is done. The Adventures of Robin Hood Chapter 2 Robin Hood and Little John Robin Hood had killed a man and killed the king's deer. It was impossible for the young man to return home. So he became an outlaw living in Sherwood Forest. As the year passed, 100 outlaws joined him in the woods. Some of these outlaws were in trouble for shooting the king's deer because they were hungry. Other men had lost their land when the king seized it for himself. Some men had been cheated by rich, evil bishops. So they were all forced to leave home and hide in the forest. In time, they chose Robin as their leader. And like Robin, they vowed to help the poor and people in need. One spring morning, Robin felt restless. He decided to look for adventure. You stay behind in the woods and listen for my horn, he said to his men. If I blow it three times, come running. It's a signal that I need your help. Robin wandered out of the forest. He greeted pretty girls on their way to market. He saw a monk riding a donkey and a knight on a fine horse. He bowed before a fair lady. At last, he came to a narrow wooden bridge over a stream. He spotted a huge stranger on the other side. The narrow bridge was only wide enough for one man. Both men hurried to cross the bridge first. They met in the middle. Out of my way, cried Robin. No, replied the stranger. You get out of my way. I'll use my bow and arrows to make you move declared Robin. You coward, said the man. You threaten me with a bow? But all I have is this. He shook a heavy wooden staff, the kind used for fighting. No one calls me a coward, said Robin. I'll cut a staff from those trees over there. Then we'll see what happens. Robin stepped off the bridge and made a long staff from a tree. While he worked, he sneaked a look at the stranger. The tall man was whistling and gazing at the stream as he waited for Robin. That guy is huge, Robin said to himself. He looks quite strong, too. But Robin went bravely back to the bridge, carrying his staff. I'm ready. Let's fight on the bridge until one of us tumbles into the stream. The stranger twirled his staff over his head. Let's go. Robin struck first, but the stranger blocked the blow. After an hour, both men were tired and bruised. At last, Robin smacked the stranger in the ribs. The man wobbled, but didn't fall off the bridge. Instead, he hit Robin over the head. Robin was furious. He hit the man as hard as he could, but the stranger struck back, knocking Robin into the stream. 
the stranger <laughs> laughed. And where are you now? Robin couldn't help laughing too. I'm floating out to sea! He joked as he climbed onto dry land. Let's shake hands. You're the bravest man I've ever met. Robin raised his horn and blew three times. Suddenly a group of men dressed in green burst from the woods. What's wrong, Robin? Called Will Scarlet. You're soaking wet. Robin grinned. This big fellow knocked me into the water. Then he shall go for a swim too, cried Will. Robin's men leaped onto the stranger. The stranger fought back fiercely with his staff, but they wrestled him to the ground. Let him go, Robin said. Don't hurt him. He seems like a good and honest man. Then he said to the stranger, How about joining my band of men? You'll have three suits of green clothes every year, plus all you can eat and drink. You're not very good with a staff, grumbled the man. He was still angry with Robin's men. Can you shoot an arrow better than I can? If so, then I'll join you. Fine, said Robin. Someone lend this stranger a bow and arrow. Will cut a small piece of white bark and fastened it to a tree. The stranger took aim. He hit the bark with his first arrow. Nice shot, Robin said. Now it is my turn. Robin stepped up and aimed. His arrow cut through the air and split the first arrow down the middle. What an incredible shot, cried the stranger. I'm John Little and I'll gladly join your band. Robin grinned. You're such a big man. I think we'll call you Little John. My name is Robin Hood, and you shall be my right-hand man. The Adventures of Robin Hood Chapter 3 A Trap to Catch Robin I'll capture that outlaw Robin Hood one day, vowed the Sheriff of Nottingham. The Sheriff was related to the man whom Robin had killed in Sherwood Forest. But there was another reason the Sheriff wanted to catch Robin. The King was offering a generous reward, 200 pounds. But no one wanted to help the Sheriff find Robin, not even when he offered a reward too. People were afraid of the bold outlaw, and many even laughed at the sheriff. He'd never be able to capture Robin. This made the sheriff very angry. Robin Hood thinks he can get away with breaking the king's laws, said the sheriff to his servants. Well, the king will hear about this. Get everything ready for a trip to London. We're going to see King Henry. For two days, the sheriff's servants prepared for the trip. The sheriff's men polished their armor, eager to impress the king. At last, everyone set off for London. And what a sight the sheriff and his men made. People stopped to watch them riding on their fine horses. The men wore shining armor and fancy clothing. After two days, the sheriff and his men finally reached London, where King Henry lived with Queen Eleanor. The sheriff and his men were led to the king. They bowed in front of him. Your Majesty, said the sheriff. What can I do for you, sheriff? Asked King Henry. Is there something that you want? As you know, that rascal Robin Hood lives near Nottingham. The sheriff began. He kills your deer and robs your loyal men. I've tried to arrest him, but I haven't been able to lay a hand on him. I've come to beg your majesty for help. You want my help? The king's eyes were wide in amazement. You come here with all these armed men! And you can't catch one thief? I'm 
Uh, well, your majesty, Robin is very clever. The sheriff went on. He's unlike other outlaws who... Get out of my sight! Roared the king. Go back to Nottingham and come up with a plan. If you can't capture Robin Hood on your own, maybe you shouldn't be sheriff. Yes, your majesty. I'll think of a plan, your majesty. The sheriff backed away from the king, making one low bow after another. He groaned quietly to himself. I have no idea what to do, he thought. The group rode slowly back to Nottingham. The sheriff hung his head during the trip. At last, the sheriff's face lit up. Aha! He cried. I've got an idea! Ride quickly! He ordered his men. We have a lot of work to do. I know how to lure Robin Hood out of the forest and into a trap. A few days later, the sheriff sent messengers to deliver news across the kingdom. The sheriff was holding a big archery contest in Nottingham. First prize was a gold arrow. The sheriff smiled slyly, <laughs> delighted with his clever idea. Robin Hood won't be able to resist an archery contest. I'll surely be able to arrest him now. And indeed, Robin Hood could not resist the contest. As soon as he heard the news, he gathered his band of men. Come, my merry men. Let's enter this shooting contest. There's a fine prize of a gold arrow. And it would annoy the sheriff if one of us won. Hooray! Shouted the men. Let's do it! Wait, my good master. Called out David of Doncaster. I've just come from the Blue Boar Inn. I heard something very interesting from some men there. They say the sheriff wants you to enter the contest so he can capture you. I believe it's a trap, Robin. You must stay here in Sherwood Forest where you'll be safe. Hmm. Well, maybe we won't go. Robin was quiet for a moment. Oh, but I don't want the sheriff to think I'm afraid of him. David was worried. I told you, it's a trap, he said. The inn's owner heard it straight from one of the sheriff's men. I beg you not to go. Thank you for the warning, David, said Robin. But this news actually makes the contest seem even more interesting. His eyes twinkled with fun. We're sure to have a good time. Isn't that so, men? His men cheered. They were all looking forward to the shooting contest.